Hey guys, what's up? It's Anna Louise and welcome back to another video. Today is Monday, July 11th and this is my surgery vlog video basically um, where I'm going to document my surgery that I get for having pre-melanoma cancer. Um, skin Melanoma is a type of skin cancer which is an aggressive type that actually can spread however like the part that i'm having surgery on um it is in the pre-cancer stage if you are wondering about like all the beforehand parts about it i do have two videos um about that the first one where i first went and then like the second one where I got the results and then you know so I will link that above but before we get into today's video please make sure to subscribe to my channel before you leave and hit that bell notification so that you can be updated every time I upload a brand new video and with that being said let's hop right on in all right you guys so I know this is gonna be edited so you won't be able to see but boy I am stumbling on my words in today's video because I am so nervous and usually I don't get that nervous especially not until like right before it happens when I get surgeries or even you know like procedures done um but I'm like so extra nervous with this one and I woke up a lot and woke up early being nervous and my surgery right now at this point is in less than less than 30 minutes like we're about to leave for this is the first like surgery I've had that is in the town I live in before we have to like travel but like it's right down the road so I'm about to leave but I'm extremely extremely nervous of course I am documenting this for you guys because I know a lot of you are invested in it and first of all like the response that I get and the love that I've gotten from you guys means everything to me like trust me it really does like I it just blows my mind and it means the world to me to have your support and your love through this and i know a lot of people also wanted to be updated and i also wanted to update people in general <laughs> who may not know my channel or anything about me but are you know facing a similar struggle and they want to feel less alone or feel comforted and know what it's like and that's how what i always say is that i always advocate for health and i have like a lot of different health issues unfortunately but i like to ad advocate for them talk about them and hopefully help someone else so this is me talking about that right now i'm just wearing some really loose shorts very very loose um trying to be as loose as possible because the area is really 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 lower abdomen like honestly it's probably even a little lower than a where you would have a c-section scar so that's that and i know in the last video someone said that they wish that i could have showed them the moles but the very first appointment that i went to i had no idea this was going to happen to me like i did not think i was going to have to have any of that happen so unfortunately i don't have like a good photo of the mole because of that but i can try my best to find like similarities to the ones they removed um and yeah so i'm just gonna be documenting this i'm really really nervous i feel like sick and i have my anxiety is really heightened but i'm about to leave and i'm about to go and i will film and you know as much as i can but huh, wish me luck because i'm about to leave <laughs> Hello, it's me. <laughs> I hope that you can't see how dusty the lens is. Um, welcome to today's video, you guys. In all seriousness, I am going to try to make it through this video, okay? It's been one week. No, it hasn't. It's not even been a week. I I'm already like... Okay, anyway. It's almost been a week since since my surgery for, mel for melanoma skin cancer. Um, I have pre-cancer and I needed to remove it and I have been keeping up with my journey and like telling you guys all about it from like two previous videos 
I don't know what that was. But anyway, two previous videos where I talked about everything so far and I was going to, you know, make this video here to tell you about my surgery, to like give you some insight and all that kind of good stuff. Of course, before going into it, I was hoping it would be a <laughs> way easier video than what this is going to have to be. I thought it was going to be not hard like I, it's gonna have to be but unfortunately that's not the case um I had a very traumatic experience this was it was not it just wasn't good but if you are anyone who uh, is dealing with melanoma or pre-melanoma anything like that or you are getting tested for it and you are wanting to learn more or just you know educate yourself and know more about it i'm here for you i'm advocating for this and that's why i'm making this video and i made the other two which i'll link above it was a very traumatic day and a lot happened and i have been just like making it through day by day so my surgery was on monday july 11th i believe but today's the 15th it's friday um and with like that being said <sighs> I had mentioned, I think, before that I did not like the dermatologist that I went to. Um, when I went there to begin with, I had no idea that any of this was going to happen. I literally thought it was going to be a checkup and to ask a question about my arm. And then, like, if anything serious needed to happen or whatever, I just, like, I would have not went here. I live in a really small town and medical, like, seeking medical t um, help from this area is just not good at all and that would be a whole nother story but everyone here even knows it so the deal is is that you know I went and I had I had troubles they are very unprofessional and stuff like that but you know also with my anxiety because I do have very very bad anxiety and I do have depression and these things do affect my chronic illnesses that I have and my so my mental health really affects my physical health and you know those things play off of each other oh my god I'm doing this in a 90 degree car it's hot you guys oh my gosh okay um so those things feed off of each other and we went ahead and decided to go through with doing it there because um especially too because of my anxiety we had already started it so we're like let's just finish it we'll do the surgery here and it didn't seem like a big deal okay so all the physician's assistant told me because she's the one that actually saw me the doctor himself hadn't seen me although he's the one that had to do the surgery so all the physician's assistant had told me was He's gonna have to go in there, go through a few layers of skin to your subcutaneous fat, remove a portion, and then you'll have stitches and you'll come back in two weeks. That's all she said, okay? And the places that they removed on my body, which I am completely fine. They removed two moles and I'm completely fine with showing you. Um, but they are around the size of a nickel, maybe a tiny bit smaller or just proportion wise they're about the size of a nickel so we thought it would be about like that she said nothing otherwise so yeah i knew i was going to have surgery i knew it was going to be a scary thing a nerve-wracking thing and definitely a big deal because we are dealing with melanoma which melanoma is the most aggressive form of skin cancer like it's the one that people literally die from um and so it's a big deal and they have to what i know now is it's just not as simple as what I thought and it was a very traumatic experience first of all she said that he did the surgery on his lunch break so I was like okay you know I'll be the only one in there whatever um first of all I waited in there forever the waiting room was filling up it was almost an hour past my initial appointment time before I went back my anxiety was like through the roof um it was very very nerve-wracking and my husband unfortunately got sick so he could not he like could not be in the room with me or anything like that and my mom was at work and um by the way if we she just she was very mad and if she knew it was i was gonna have to go through what i went through she would have been there with me but we didn't know so they anyway i was alone and i'm back there waiting and the nurse comes in she's not like the sweetest but it gets worse but she comes in and um i started my period that day too and i hope that's not too tmi and i know that's not going to affect everyone because not everyone has a uterus but the mole and where they're having to do the surgery was right on my uterus <laughs> like right where a c-section scar is okay and i started my period that morning so it made none of this any bit any better um 
so you know she prepped me and like got me ready and she's like you know hold tight he'll be in so then he came in and he started marking on my belly like really fast and everything was really chaotic and it was like they're kind of like trying to hurry to get things started and he marked this like really big area on my like lower regions and by big area I mean like four to five inches long. I mean it almost goes the whole span of my lower abdomen like there's only like a couple inches off from it being like the whole area pretty much and he was like this is how big your scar is gonna be and I just looked down and I'm like oh my god like it was a lot and I had no idea but I'm like okay and because of my anxiety too I have a hard time speaking up for myself um, asking questions or anything like that so you know because a lot of things run through my mind and if you have anxiety you probably know or you probably do with probably similar things so when I was there too because of my unfortunate issues with like the, the results that did come back about the melanoma the original reason which of course I said I'll link the video above that I went to the dermatologist to begin with with a lump in my arm there's a lump in my arm underneath one of my moles and um, we were worried about it and at first they, they weren't that concerned but then whenever we got my results back you know it just didn't sit right with me it didn't sit right with my mom and we were just like we think it's probably better to get it out so I bring this up to the doctor and afterwards the way he was talking when I brought it up it didn't sound like what I thought was gonna happen it did not sound like we were on the same page so I'm like so what are you like gonna do he's like I'll cut off the mole and send it in but I'm and then I was like, you know, but it's about the lump underneath it though, not the mole itself. So then he was like, oh yeah, okay, well then we can take it out, but you're going to have to have stitches. I'm like, that's okay. And he, I didn't know how he was going to do it. He didn't explain it. He just said, okay, punch biopsy. And like, he was like already going at it like fast before I could even really process it. I had no time to really process it, but I knew that it was probably best to get it out. Um and it was a lipoma however whenever he did it and he put the numbing in i was awake for this you guys and the arm wasn't even the main one but i was awake for this he put the light or the lipoma in he put the lidocaine in let it sit and when he came back to do it on me i so i could feel the punch for the punch biopsy but it didn't hurt but then i could feel him digging around in my arm trying to get the lipoma out and it was out and my mole's gone and that's an afterthought like I have a whole a whole feeling on that but that was fast and then he put all of the shots in my lower abdomen and I asked to be warned because I like to be warned when I'm going to be hurt when a needle's going to go in my body I like to know I do not like it to come as a shock and he was already starting to do it and it was going fast and it hurt and I'm like please like can you warn me and that was something that bothered me and with my already in heightened anxiety, the lidocaine has epinephrine in it. Epi or epinephrine, which is the full term, it will increase your heart rate. So with an already anxious person, my anxiety, it made it even more strict through the roof. I had a hard time breathing. I was shaking uncontrollably and my heart was beating really, really fast. He then let me sit and like lay in there while he went to another room, was talking to a patient. I could literally hear every word he was saying. And he's like, let's freeze some moles off of you. Is that okay today? I was sitting there like feeling like I was dying while waiting because it makes you feel really bad if you've had this experience like whether you've went to the dentist and had to have lidocaine shots or not you may know if you have that feeling that's how epinephrine makes you feel and then he comes back in and gets ready for the surgery and I am already so nervous I'm scared and he's like you know going fast through it and everything and he comes over there and I kid you not like I was not numbed good enough I could feel the scalpel I could feel it cut into my body and I started yelling I was like ow ow like this really hurts I was yelling that it hurt and he was like you can feel it and I'm like yes and so he's like get more lidocaine to the nurse and she came over and before I was you know even though I already asked for warning he was just shooting it in there like and it just felt like a million little bee stings and I'm telling you I've been through so much if you know my past medical history if this is your first time watching my channel you probably don't but like this 
I mean, and I've had a lot of lidocaine. He was like just doing it as fast as he could. And then obviously like it does take a while to take into effect, but he would kept still cutting. So where there were sometimes I couldn't feel it, there was a million more times I could. I could feel the scalpel. I could feel scissors cutting. I could hear them snipping. I could feel clamps holding back my skin and every little thing like here and there, I would feel it. Now the nurse that was in there with him for the actual procedure, she was a different nurse than the first one. This woman did not say one word to me. She was not sweet, not kind, no good bedside manner. I was laying there freaking out because already I could feel what was happening and that was scary enough so I was like I really need to hold her hand because I needed something to grip like if I would have had needed a stress ball or something so I said can I hold her hand she did not come all right guys so funny story my battery quit and I ran out of memory but honestly I am not gonna complain about that because I was about to die in there it was so hot but I really wanted to change up the scenery from being in this exact location uh, it's just you know where I gotta find the good lighting anyway so I left on the fact that I was on the table and I was needing help from the nurse like I just really needed someone there for me I needed the help I wanted to hold her hand so I could squeeze it because I was feeling pain that I shouldn't have felt to begin with like I should have been First of all, for the whole entire, the way I, it went, I should have been put to sleep, um, but I shouldn't have felt it. So anyway, he says to the nurse, I think she wants you to hold her hand because she wasn't coming over there. So she walks over and she's like assisting, like standing over facing him. And then all she does is to me is this. She lifts her elbow up, doesn't say anything to me, nothing. And just does this so I start gripping her arm and you know obviously I felt really bad because she wasn't talking to me wasn't consoling me offering me any sympathy words of encouragement any like I'm so sorry it's gonna be okay I know this has to be hard on you but like you're doing great like it's okay squeeze as neat you know as hard as you need nothing like that no words no nothing like I don't even know the nurse's name there's a spider crawling on my makeshift tripod. Cool. Anyway, so like I said, I don't even know her name. Like she, no words. And so anyway, with that being said, I'm like squeezing on her arm and I'm apologizing like I do because I apologize a lot even when I shouldn't. And I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And then you know, he's cutting and I can feel it. I can literally feel the pain with the scalpel. And I'm like, okay, sorry, got abort a mis abort mission, abort mission. Okay, third time's a charm, I hope. Oh, sorry, you guys. Like, it's just a mess. Sorry, genuinely. <laughs> so anyway, um, like I said, I am feeling pain and you know, I'm laying there and I'm having a panic attack as I do because that's you know what happens to me and I'm laying there and I'm like I can't breathe I can't breathe I can't breathe and I was like yelling that over and over again and this is like basically one of the one of the only times that the nurse even talks to me and oh, there's about to be a cat fight anyway and she was like they're hissing at each other gracious days of mighty animals all right anyway so she looked at me and she was like, pull down your mask, pull down your mask. And then she, I was like, I can't, I can't, I can't. And I was like shaking my head like profusely. And she was like, take your hand and pull down your mask. And my hand, like I've never done this in a panic attack situation, but my body just went stiff. I had my hand held out and it was just as stiff as a board like this. And I was like, I can't, I can't, I can't like that, you know? And then she just gave up and kind of turned her head back around. And that was all she wrote with that. The doctor, and doctors do this all the time. It's just a form of distraction while they're doing something to you. And he was like, so, you know, did you do anything this weekend? I'm like, no, I don't know, no. And I was like, well, yes, but I can't think. Like, I can't, I don't, I can't. Cause you know, obviously like I, cause I shouldn't have been feeling it. And I was scared cause I was laying there and I could just, you know, and I would wince and jump and I'm like, I can feel that. 
and what i'm telling you i mean this was not a fast thing like this it was a surgery that went on for a while and it never got better um and it was that over and over again and then he proceeded to say whilst i was laying there do you want to hear something worrisome and i thought it was going to be about me and i was like yeah like sure because I was scared and he it wasn't about me he just got into something about a lidocaine shortage I'll spare you guys of that but that scared the de scared me to death and I tried to crack a joke because I felt like these people hated me because I was in pain and yelling out and like I said I have an issue where I apologize and I feel like everything's my fault and I was trying to crack a joke about how like well if the lidocaine you know wears out with the first cut they'll be knocked out anyway because of being you know being passed out and then you know it'll be fine and then he like proceeds to say while I'm laying there on the table just scaring me like even even more about other surgeries um what happens to you when you're under anesthesia i won't and i won't even tell you guys like i don't want to scare anyone because it is scary and it is something that i learned before and i tried to push out my mind and i was actually going on in my head with if it was true or not um because like i was trying to push it out and not remember it and then he kind of just confirmed my fear of what happens to you under anesthesia um in a surgery in a surgery room um and so anyway and i even mentioned like with through this whole entire thing i was like you know i should have been put to sleep and then he just kind of laughed and I also expressed the concern that I was going to be sick because my blood pressure drops in situations like these sometimes especially if I'm feeling a lot of pain and then I have like a panic attack and I would be afraid that I would like break out into heat and like like a, a hot flash kind of thing and then throw up and then he was like that nah, happens once a week we'll pull a trash can up and I was like don't say that I was afraid because so I'm like okay if I'm cut open I can't throw and you can't throw up while you're laying down you'll choke like just all these things were going through my head and it was very like I said painful because I felt multiple different parts of this whole entire process and you know definitely definitely did not have a sympathetic helpful nurse or anything like that talking to me nothing that was helpful should not have been feeling what I felt no time to process what even happened with my arm but really like the big ordeal and essentially I had no idea that he was getting close to the end of the surgery and I'm like you know every time I'd feel a sharp pain I'd be like you know please warn me when you're doing this so I can be prepared at least because I could feel everything and he was like I don't think you're going to want me to warn you with every poke because you have about 20 whole stitches left. And I was like, because I didn't know that the surgery was this extensive. Even my mom, when I told her after and she got really mad, she was like, I thought you would have like six stitches max because of the size of, you know, like of what it was. And he had already been doing stitches which I could feel, by the way, because that was another part of the pain. Um, I could see blood and I could feel it. Um, and then he still had over 20 left. So I, I pretty much, I have close to what I'm assuming is around 50 stitches, which was not even in my wildest dreams what I thought was going to happen. And I could feel each one. And then finally when it was over, I breathed a sigh of relief, but I felt myself getting really sick because of my blood pressure dropping. Now, in other doctor's offices, when I've had procedures done um, or surgery, well, no, I've been put to sleep for every, like, surgery, surgery, except for this one, which I should have been put to sleep for. But other, like, upper procedures with, like, other health issues, you know, like, my blood pressure has dropped and I've gotten sick and they've helped me and handled it very professionally. However... I was alone, I was scared, and I was trying to remember what to do to combat this myself. So I started to ask, I said, hey, do you have an ice pack that I can put on my neck? Like the different pressure points that can cool, that will cool down my body. I said, can I please remain laying down? Um, and I just need a second. So he said yes, he wanted to give me the ice pack. That was fine, but he just, then after that he left. The nurse was in there and she was just like, you know, I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna put this down if you wanna get up. I'm like okay and she's like I'll be back so I just laid in there with the ice pack alone 
And when it came time for her to come back, I need, I was asking for help to get up, which I assumed she would help me and like offer. Um, and she didn't. And then I was really scared. Usually they'll have basins like at a doctor's office, which are the little things that you throw up in. So I asked for one in case I throw up in the car. Now her reply to that was, I'll pull you up a trash can in the waiting room. So I said, no, forget it. And then she asked for the ice pack back, which usually they let you keep it because I was using it. And normally they're just, they're just cold packs and usually doctors let you keep them, especially if you're sick. And I'm just like, just forget it. Like I was so fed up. I'm like, here, you know, like take it back. I don't need it anymore, whatever. It was really, really hard. And when I got out to the waiting room and I walked out and my husband was there to pick me up. Like I said, he was sick. He couldn't be with me. As soon as we met eyes, I broke down, I lost it, I had a full mental breakdown, I was hyperventilating, I could not speak, he was very concerned, he was very upset, I had a very hard time getting words out, and just to mention briefly, when I was laying on the table, like, laying there before she came back in when I had the ice pack on my neck, I was texting my mom, she was furious, and she's like, wait, you have how many, how, how could you possibly have that when, you know, it was this small, whatever, she was so mad because she would have been there for me if she would have known. We were not told that. Um, not even like one iota of a clue. Like she was so shocked and I'm like, mama, I'm traumatized. Like this is not good. When I got home, she helped me out. Um, and obviously she was really mad. I do want to also mention that the doctor never asked, offered me pain medication which is something that I didn't think of until I was home because of how bad I wanted to get out of there, how bad I felt, how scared I was. The whole traumatic experience didn't offer me any pain medication or anything to help one bit whatsoever and didn't tell me the extent of pain I was gonna be in either, which yes, it's common sense. I just had surgery, yes, I'll be in pain. But when you're, I felt shell shocked. I mean, when I tell you, I was, my mind was not there. I forgot so many things after I got home. I could not think straight. I was just like zoning out. I couldn't move. Like I felt like I had just like done a hard days of work. I was drained emotionally and physically. Um, something I didn't think about. And also you may have been like, you know, you should ask questions, blah, blah, blah. When you have anxiety that's so bad and that you, and you're in those compromising situations, you can't think straight. It's hard. And when you're not told these things and offered these information, it just makes it a million times harder. So that happened and I was in immense pain. Once the lidocaine, um, what was all given to me was wearing off. I had a hard time, like I could not get comfortable even sitting down. Um, I have to be on an antibiotic. I'm currently on it now just to prevent infection. Um, it's like a 10 day thing and it's very normal is to you know prevent infection. So if you are gonna go through this, um, the biggest takeaway is I'm not trying to scare you and I know saying that does no good. I'm sure your doctor's office will be a million times better um, than mine and I will not be going back after I get my stitches removed. Like if I have to have this done again because I do have moles from head to toe that are really weird and do have to be monitored very frequently. Like I will be changing places. This was not to scare you. Like I said, many places I know are better. Like this is just a piece of shit place. Um, but just know that with melanoma, because it is very serious, they do have to take a lot out. They go deep. They will take out portions all around it just to be safe. Of course, this is being sent in and it's just like a hoping and praying to God that like melanoma didn't occur also or like the full blown melanoma wasn't below because it could have grown like deep down. So we have to make sure that that came back clear. We are checking on my arm, so I did have that removed and there are stitches. I didn't have more time to mourn the loss of the mole, which may sound very, very stupid to some of you. However, I've had body images, of course, through my life, but one thing I always loved as a child was the fact that on my arm right here, it's gonna be really hard to tell, but it was something I always thought was cool about myself since I was a tiny little girl. I have moles that go in a straight line up my whole entire arm. It's always been one of my favorite things about me, and now like this main one in the center is gone into which I saw it like hanging off of me and cause I saw everything. Um, and it was really hard to deal with and it's hard to know that it's gone now. And I know that may sound stupid, but it was just a lot. So that was my experience overall. And that has taken me a long time to be able to film this. I've also been really sick and motion sick to my head and I'm not really for sure why. I got a different antibiotic, 
but that's not helping i don't know if it's just from all the trauma and like dealing with a lot and i'm just really extra extra stressed because i stay stressed anyway i don't know i'm just a huge mess right now that was my experience i'll get my stitches out they have to be in for a total of two weeks it hasn't been a it hasn't even been a week yet it'll be a week monday since i've had the procedure overall the over the few past few days the pain in the actual areas have subsided some gradually each day showers are hard i'm not squeamish usually blood usually doesn't bother me stitches have been something that have always bothered me to have the thoughts of having them and they make me sick to my stomach thankfully my mom is a nurse and she like dresses my wounds for me because they have to be like i am completely like covered with gauze and like surgical tape all down where it is of course i just have a band-aid here but the other one is like completely dressed so she helps me thank god because it makes me very sick the water does hurt it some um so what i do is i just use like unscented dove soap i lather it up really really good and let it drain down there because it is very sore i have a lot of stitches and yeah so that's how i'm keeping it clean my biggest takeaways though are just to know if it is that there will be a lot removed um, and even though if your mole removal is like mean the size of a nickel, they're going to remove a lot more. Um, so just know that. And yeah, that was my experience and I'm sure I- So if I left stuff out, I genuinely did not mean to, but it's hectic and I have repeated this story so many times because I've been so- Like I have PTSD from it. I've had a very hard time falling to sleep for especially the first and second night. Cause I was replaying it all in my mind. I've had an issue cutting things with scissors. I have my I have my business and I have to cut things. Um, I was order I was even opening a box of um, stock for my store with a box cutter and it was really hard. So I'm definitely traumatized from this experience and I didn't think it would go this way. Um, and yeah, I'm just learning to deal with it. I do have to be checked up very frequently now because of this because you know we have to check to make sure that melanoma isn't anywhere else and we have to just closely monitor these moles um and that was what happened and it was a very horrible thing and i didn't expect to have to go through that but if you have any questions you can let me know down below um i know i did get a question on the last video about what melanoma or like what my moles looked like the one that looked the weirdest actually came back the most or came back as the moderate one the one to me that looked more normal was the one that came back as severe and precancerous and it was just a dark dark mole the one on my stomach had multiple different color variations definitely look it up on google um i would have inserted the picture but like i said i had no idea this was going to happen and also i'm just like so trauma I, it's hard for me to even look it up and like deal with it it's just really hard like that's why i have had i've like waited days to film this but if you have any questions down below, please let me know and I will not cease to, I mean, I, I'm going to, I will answer every question basically when I'm just trying to get across. Sorry if this was sporadic. I know we had to start over three different times. I'm just kind of a mess right now. Um, but yeah, and I can make other videos if you need them in the future about anything else regarding this. Let me know down below. Um, other than that, yeah, this was my experience with my surgery from removing precancerous melanoma um, on my very, very lower abdomen. And um I will update you guys on this as well and the pathology report when my lower abdomen one comes back. But I want to thank my patrons as always. Jeremy, Maddie, Davis, Mercy, Janae, Casey, Mel, Vicky, Vanessa. Thank you guys from the bottom of my heart for being a patron. Please, please, please come join the family over here. Subscribe to my channel. I make all different types of content and I definitely do advocate for health and all these different health issues I have. You can find the videos on my channel, but I do so much more. You can subscribe by clicking my face right up there and you can watch another video by clicking right over there. It would mean the world to me if you would do so and I hope you have a great day or night or whenever you're watching this. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.